Tomorrow, should I say the question again? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, how you doing, Coach? Welcome back. Um, Thank you. Have you got any further clarification on when James will be joining you, either for individual workouts or for participation with the team? And uh, what kind of a setback is it, given the schedule for this year's training camp, uh, to have somebody that important not taking part? Uh, yeah, as far as timetable, uh, there is no timetable as far as I know. Um, and it is a setback. You know, you want your best player to be here. And um, there is a short window, as you've alluded to. As I said yesterday, we're working as if this is the 6th to the 23rd. So there is some time, but, you know, it is a setback. I mean, I, yeah, I have to be honest and, and, and understand that this is a setback, not having one of the best players in the NBA here. But I'm working with the guys who are here, and we're working hard, and we're doing a good job. Thank you. Kelly, go. Hey, Coach, just speaking off of that, how much have you been able to do realistically with the team, given that so much of your team is not there in James Harden? But how much have you been able to do with the other guys? Oh, we've been doing a lot. We've been doing a lot. Like, the, the practice plan hasn't changed not one bit as far as how we're going to do things on the offensive and defensive end, um, how we're going to, I mean, today we worked on pick and roll defense and that is whoever's on the floor and the way that our offense is set up um, with less isolations and more ball movement, that's for everybody. So our, our practice plans and, and the way that we've been doing things haven't changed that one bit. Adam Spolin. Steven, is James currently in Houston? I don't know. At, at some point, do you almost, I mean, you guys have a game in, in 16 days. At some point, do you almost have to operate like he's not going to be there for the 23rd? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of taking it day by day. And, you know, we operate how we operate. So, I don't know. Brian T. Smith. Steven, I understand this is a very unprecedented situation. Um, have you guys discussed, and, and a fine probably wouldn't matter, I acknowledge that even asking that, but, but, but finding him or some, some type of internal discipline? I mean, how, how, do, how do you and the organization handle this when you're trying to get full commitment, other players are practicing, um, and, and James is a superstar, but he's not showing that he, he wants to, to, to play with the team right now? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it's unprecedented. I'm sure there's been guys who've done it before. Um, I've been in situations before where we had to hold out and, you know, just kind of handle each individual situation um, on its own merit and individually. So as far as any sort of punishment, we haven't even crossed that bridge yet. We're, we're just trying to work piece by piece. Thank you. Cody Davis. Hey, Coach, um, second day of training camp. Can you just talk about what you have seen from John Wall so far, especially given the fact that he's coming off of two major injuries? John Wall's looked great. He's looked really, really good. Uh, pushing the ball up the floor, getting everybody organized, um, as a point guard does, hitting guys on time, on target, on passes. He's still a little bit rusty, obviously, since he hasn't played in so long, but He's a joy to coach because he is a coach on the floor, but he also allows me to uh, coach him, which is uh, amazing. So he's, he's really doing a good job. He actually, in our scrimmages, made a uh, buzzer-beating game winner. So did Cuz. So it was good to have both those guys do that in, in today's scrimmages. Sam Amick. Hi, Steven. Good to see you, sir. Um, <laughs> I wonder, you know, the other day you said you hadn't connected with James after the trade. So now what, if any, message um, and what's the communication, again, if any, from him about what this means? If it's a, a case of a guy not thinking through protocols and, and, and now that means there's a delay, if it's a more direct situation where he's making it clear that he doesn't want to be a part of the Rockets anymore, do you have any clarity about the message? I have no clarity about the message, honestly. Um, I take it basically at face value that he's not here. And um, 
what the reasoning is is on him. You know, he's the one who can explain why or why not he's not here. So, um, you know, uh, for me to make inferences and and think about the possibilities isn't real to me. What's real is he's not here and um, he has a reason, but that's on him to tell whoever what his reason is. Appreciate it. Mike Bremen. Hey, Stephen, how are you? All right, Mike. Um, John Wall, how much merit can we put into the fact that John Wall did say yesterday to the media that he's had some contact with, with James and he, he feels 100% certain he's going to be here and that they want to play together. How much stock can, we, can you put into that at this point, given there's been no communication with you? I put stock into it. You know, players are players. Um, coaches and players are different, a different relationship. So um, the only relationship that I have with James is the fact that he was one of the people who, in the interview process, recommended that I get the job. So that's the relationship that I have. I assume the relationship that he has with John goes a lot further down the road. So for, for that communication to happen doesn't surprise me. And uh, we'll, we'll see when he gets here. Do you have an update on P.J. Tucker? Yeah, P.J. was here today, and uh, it was great to see him. Haley Griffin. Hey, Coach. Yesterday, you said that something that stood out to you was the veteran savvy of Eric Gordon. He has talked about how last season was a little frustrating for him, dealing with the injuries. He couldn't really get into a rhythm. What has stood out to you about how Eric has played uh, early on through practice? Well, We've been doing 80% defense <laughs> and he is like, a re I, I didn't realize what a good defender he is playing against him. I mean, he closes out great technique. He's strong. He's quick. He has very good defensive instincts. And then on the offensive end, he can shoot obviously. And, and, you know, his, his job has been to shoot and attack closeouts, but, he has some game on the offensive end, which is which is really good to see. And the way that we're playing, spaced out, five out, and, and multiple guys touching the ball, it's good for him uh, to either turn the corner or shoot the shot that's created by a teammate. So I've definitely been very happy with what he's been doing on both ends of the floor and, and look for it to continue. We'll take two more. Tim Davis. Hey, Coach, can you talk about just, you know, I know you said a bit about it before, you're working a lot on defense, but just what you're seeing from so many new pieces together and how you feel about the progress since any day now you guys will be starting <laughs> training camp games? Yeah, it's, it's a process. You know, we, like as you said, we have a group of guys who haven't necessarily been together for very long, and they're big pieces of what we do. So, um we, we've been spending a lot of time on the defensive end and, and trying to get guys on the same page. But the offensive part is, uh, is a work in progress because, you know, whether Christian Wood is going to roll or pop and pick and roll is something that John Wall has to feel and, and go through a bunch of times. And they have to create that bond and create that synergy between the two of them. So there's a lot of situations like that. That's just one, but there's a lot of situations like that where – it's just going to take time for the guys to learn each other and up to me to, you know, we had a good film session uh, before practice today so they could really get a feel for what I'm looking for and then they could communicate with each other as far as, you know, how they can help each other play better. Thank you. And last question, Kelly Eco. Hey, Coach, so last season uh, with the team going small, there were times when the defense looked amazing and times where it still needs some work to do. How much of that have you changed and how much of that changes by just adding size uh, into Marcus Cousins and Christian Wood? Yeah, size size definitely makes a difference um, in what we're going to be doing defensively. Um, and as I've kind of been saying since I've been here, we want to have multiple ways of playing defense. So. Um, this going small and switching is still going to be in our toolbox, so to speak, but playing bigger and, and uh, dropping with the big and playing pick and rolls two on two so you don't have to help as much and 
you're not allowing as many three-point shots is another part of what we're doing. So we've been going over the, uh, the stuff with the bigs um, a little bit more traditional for the last couple of days, but we'll get to the switching at some point in the small, the small, uh, small ball. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you.